Good, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Whitney Dell, and um, I had this idea for a town meeting because um, I was very concerned um, that we're in this time of change and that the city really needed to hear from um, all the seniors in the senior center. Um, so that's why we're having this meeting. Um, secondly, make sure you shut off your um, cell phones. And also, welcome to the Zoom audience. That's Matt over there who's doing that. So the purpose of this meeting is to hear what you want from MSAC. And we'll, we'd like you to keep the four questions in mind that we came up with, which are right up here. Uh, what services should the Senior Center offer its members? What benefits should MSAC be offering its members and supporting towns? What needs to be changed at MSAC? And what should be the top two priorities at MSAC? So as you formulate your thoughts and if you're gonna speak, if you could aim for some of those questions, that will help our two scribes over here, Mary and Gail, who've done a really excellent job. So that would be great. Um, also, there has been some discussion about what is services and what are benefits. So services, I was thinking about this. I woke up this morning thinking about it, believe it or not. Um, it's like activities in the senior center, a foot clinic, um, you know, tax preparation, a meal, things like that. And benefits is whatever makes you happy and satisfied. So I thought, ah, oh, that's a pretty good answer. Um, we're not here to answer questions, but we have Diane, who's the um, head of the advisory council. We have her email up here. Oh, she's right here. And I um, mean, you can email with her. You should also have, you have a sheet with um, a lot of questions, so you can jot down your comments if you don't want to stand up and speak, and we'll collect those at the end. Um, this is not a time for complaints. Uh, we, the members of the Senior Center, want to tell the city what we need to formulate a way forward for a vibrant future um, for MSAC. Um, so the Zoom people, um, they can post their questions in the chat, um, which will get re recorded. Um, and if you want to speak on Zoom, you'll have to let Matt know. Um, we didn't have anybody this morning, uh, but maybe somebody tonight. Um, and definitely uh, send us your comments. We would like to um, hear them. Um, secondly, so you'll have two minutes to speak to express your views. Um, I'll call the name of the speaker um, and the waiting speaker. Uh, Tina, which is right here, she's the microphone lady and she will hold the microphone. All you have to do is speak into it. The other thing is we found from the flood meeting, a lot of people were going like this, so you can't hear them. So it would be very nice to just keep your head forward. And we have Orca here, thanks to Orca for being here. Um, they're um, taping this, so you're gonna face the camera, and so it's a little weird if you're in the middle, because some of your back's gonna be to you. Yes. Oh yes. I am, I am Whitney Dell, that's who I am, uh -huh. great. Um, so, and we have a really excellent um, timekeeper, and that's Laura Morse right here, and she has these beautiful cards, which will tell you that you have to stop talking in two minutes, you know? Good, and <laughs> my time is up, right? And it's, it's really okay to repeat. Even if people have said it, it's always good to hear, um, hear it again. Um, secondly, let's see who else I've got on my um, list here. Um, oh, I'd like to introduce Kelly, who's the um, assistant city manager for the city of Montpelier. And this is Arnie, and he is the um, director of the uh, senior center at the present moment. And he enters Di Diane, she's the advisory council. And we have some ad other advisory council members here. We have Gail and we have Mary. And I saw Heather over there. And I don't know if there's anybody else here. Oh yeah, thank you. Right. Good. Oh good. And Laura. I forgot her twice today. Oh man, that's really bad. <laughs> oh, and my lovely partner in marriage, Barbara. Yes, yay. Good. Um, good. The other thing I want to do is I would like to give Norma a round of applause because she is terrific. <laughs> so.
So at this time in the program, Kelly would like to say a few words to you. So here she is. Thank you. Can everybody hear me okay? Great. Uh, so Kelly Murphy, Assistant City Manager. Um, I saw some of you earlier. I know some of you um, and some of you I don't. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, on the way in, um, I prepared some talking points for the purposes of this discussion, um, just so you've got sort of a briefing, a little bit of um, background and what we're going to be looking at um, as we do our assessment. Um, and so just to kind of get into it, I'm going to make this pretty quick, um, but then we'll get into some of the comments, which I'm really interested to hear. Um, so for starters, really what we're interested in taking a look at is enhancing the quality of life for older adults per the mission, as well as creating opportunities. But in order to do that, we've got some work to do first. Um, so with the transition that we're in, um, with the director's position, um, and the transitions at the senior center, as well as just looking at declining membership, programming, and then the budgetary issues that we face, we're going to be doing a performance program audit of the Senior Center um, to take a look at everything. Um, so in this packet that was out front at the front table, all of those items are outlined for you. So there are some really key data points. If you have questions, please let me know um, and we can talk through them. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that you had some materials at your fingertips to really kind of see you know, what we're looking at as we sort of get into um, this first initial uh, phase. Um, so this is sort of the first opportunity for input. There will be more. Um, so if you have any comments or questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to turn it back to it. Thanks, Kelly. Good. So we're ready to um, begin. So I'll hand the microphone to Tina. And Jean Olson is up first. Yes, please. Okay. I believe MSAC is a gem. I've been a member for many years and have been physically and intellectually challenged by numerous excellent instructors. The MSAC mission is to enhance the quality of life for older adults in the Montpelier area through opportunities that develop physical, mental, cultural, social, and economic well-being in a welcoming, flexible environment. While every piece of the mission statement is important, I'd like to focus on the welcoming environment. MSAC is not just a place, it's a culture, a philosophy, an intentional awareness of the values and needs of our aging citizens. Citizens over 50 who represent 42% of Montpelier's population. We were thriving until COVID hit. We were then overwhelmed by the attention diverted to the FEAST program, and now the flood has caused yet another disruption. Now is the time to reclaim MSAC's mission and space to rebuild an even stronger center with these two top priorities. One, Hire an experienced director immediately. This is key. Someone whose sole job is to champion MSAC. Someone with a history of working as a director who has demonstrated talent, skills, and successes. Along with a proven skill set, the new director must demonstrate commitment and passion for seniors and their needs. Two, city staff should move out before the start of the fall session. The evacuation plan devised a number of years ago is outdated. The city now owns a golf course which is empty and can serve it well among other options. This would enable MSAC to rightly claim its full space as it rebuilds its affordable membership and programming. Any plan that includes sending seniors here and there around town is missing the intent of the mission. Thank you. I don't have anything as wonderful prepared, just some bullet points. And the services I think are important are the classes. And I think we should have as many in person as possible and also hybrid, because I know so many people like Zoom classes. Um, I know the existing programs like the Foot Clinic are, are important to some people as well. Um, I think the benefits are times for social interaction that could be meals, could be clubs, et cetera. And the staff changes at MSAC is, that I think needs to happen is the staff needs to be present in the center. There should not be a closed office door often so that when people come in, there's somebody to greet them. I also think the director should be in the building and also interacting with people that come through. Uh, I think we need a dedicated director. 
one who is hands-on and present in the center. There's nobody else I left. I can't touch it. I won't touch it. Um, Joan made a lot of good points, and everybody made a lot of good points, but I want to talk about how it was and my impression of how it used to be before COVID and before it all. This was a very social place. People would come in. You would always see people. You would talk to people. I should be looking at the camera <laughs> so, that you should, so that it was much more of a community than what we get today with Zoom and the classes that are not real, not, on, not here. So at some point, by the way, I'll, a side comment is, I'm not sure people will ever come back the way they used to come back here. We've gotten so used to Zoom that, that we have to deal with that as well. But we have to get people together to create a community here in, in, uh, in Montpelier. That's about it, girl. Thank you very much. We'd love you to stand up, could you? And turn around towards the camera, and I'll hold this for Okay, you. thank you. <laughs> um, I'm Ann Charles. I live upstairs. I've been lived here many years, and I've seen the um, trajectory of the Senior Center. Um, I'd like to, I applaud the last few speakers because I'd like to echo their call that we have an individual director for the Senior Center that the position not be merged, even though the current person who's supposed to be in charge is very popular, he has a demanding job himself. And so I think seniors deserve an autonomous um, institution with a director who is on site, as you say. Um, my second unpopular comment concerns the rental of the building to a group of religious people who hold services here every Sunday morning. Uh, I know they're high, they pay a good rent and that's probably the motivation for having them here. But I'd really like to preserve the separation between the government and um, church. <laughs> Thank you, that's it. Hi, um, <clears throat> I think I should have been maybe second, because now everyone has pretty much said things <laughs> that I wanted to say. But I would like to say that we know what the demographics are for this area, and 42% is huge. So it really is important to have a really good place for people to congregate, get to know each other, form friendships, and that's what keeps people um, healthy and happy. Um, Zoom is great, but you don't really get to see people. Sometimes you see their head, <laughs> sometimes you see here. So, <clears throat> but the other thing I'd like to say is <clears throat> I worked with a number of agencies <clears throat> when I had my job in Connecticut. And every time agencies were put together under one director, both of those programs suffered. And <clears throat> even the one that the person was really good at, because they had to take time away to do the other one. And the other one, they had to keep trying to learn. And in the process, they both suffered. So I think it's really important that we try to figure out a way to hire um, somebody who's a dedicated director right away and let Arnie do what he does best and have someone here for the Senior Center. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start out by agreeing completely with what Bob had to say about the importance of the sense of community. Um, I missed that. I missed that when COVID came along. And I was particularly engaged in the uh, yoga classes and literally stopped because I, I just can't do that stuff on Zoom. So I really like to see us get back to uh, doing more things inside uh, within the center itself. 
Um, also, um, I want to thank uh, Tina and the folks who've been involved in the trips because I'd like to take more trips and I haven't been able to do that for personal reasons, but I'd like to see us expand beyond the state and uh, maybe organize some trips outside of Vermont, somewhere else in the U.S., or possibly outside the U.S. Um, I know sometimes we have trouble getting enough people, and one of the thoughts I had about that is perhaps we could uh, connect up a little bit more with some of the other senior centers. Uh, for example, the Barry Area Senior Center, uh, the Plainfield Senior Center, and we might get a larger group and meet some more people. Um, one additional thing I'd like to talk about is I'd like to see us expand um, to a population that really has a hard time getting involved here. And that's folks who have brain injuries or have dementia. Um, this is something that I'm living with right now as a caregiver. And I know that my mom uh, would do really well coming here uh, for a couple of hours, uh, one or two days a week and engaging in some activities. And I know that's a funding issue, or that's something that's farther down the road, but I'd like to see us include that population and not always have a caregiver have to be here because we need breaks too, and we want to participate in center programs and activities. Thank you. Thank you. can make it. Okay. Hi. Um, I really love the senior center and particularly when we used to all meet and play bridge. We had like 16 people upstairs that used to play bridge and do a lot of activities here and it was really great. Um, and the idea of expanding into what you were talking about and all of that. I just, the one thing I wanted to talk about again was what Ann said was about like um, the religious people being here all day Sundays. Um, they take up a lot of space, but also just from a personal point of view, I was, um, you know, I was prostal, I, you know, they were, they were talking to me about God and religion as I was just going in and out of the building, um, cause I live upstairs. So, you know, I'm not sure that that's something that people would necessarily want to have happen. And so anyway, that was just my, my opinion. Thank you. Erica Garfin. Um, I want to thank whoever is responsible for organizing this, for doing this, and also I want to thank the Advisory Council for your commitment to the Senior Center. Um, like Jean, I also went to look at the census data before I came, and I would just like to add that in addition to the 42 percent of Montpelier's population who are 50 and older, the people who are 60 and older make up 30% of Montpelier's population. And I think those two numbers alone demonstrate why the Senior Center merits having, as others have said, a dedicated director on site who can really focus all of their energy and creativity to this very significant part of Montpelier's population. Um, I would actually like to talk about one specific program. Some of you will remember several years ago that uh, the Senior Center started a program called MSAC at Home, which was based on a national model called the Village Model that used, um, uses volunteers and uh, screened tradespeople to provide services and support, support so that people can remain in their homes as they age. This would essentially have taken MSAC beyond its walls. So there was a group out in the commun community. I was part of it. We did a lot of work. And then uh, finally, with Jan Jana's enthusiastic support and involvement, the Senior Center took it on as a program. Um, there, we had a fabulous, oh my goodness, okay. Anyway, 
things changed. We had a different director, we had a different AmeriCorps member, um, attention got fo focused more on feast, the village has pretty much gone away. And I would just hope that as we, my time is up, as we look towards the future, that the village gets but put back on MSAC's radar screen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Tina. Um, necessity is the mother of invention, and true invention requires thinking outside the box. The pandemic, the flood, the exit of longtime director uh, Jana Clare, and then the resignation of her replacement have left MSAC in a situation that calls for some serious thinking outside the box. And I propose that we begin by trying mightily not to cling to the past, to all those cherished memories, many of which have been, I've heard tonight. Uh, congregate meals, trips, Scrabble games, bridge games, Rick Winston's film series, and the myriad yoga, Pilates, and Bone Builders classes but rather that we focus our attention on what the wide range of Montpelier seniors need most. I've heard a lot of talk about from all the white faces here, but I think we need to re realize that there are people who are disabled, there are people who are of other races, there are people who don't feel comfortable here and have never felt comfortable here, and we do need to move outside of this building. Uh, to this end, I hope that we'll reach out to and do a thorough needs assessment of the very wide range of seniors in Montpelier who may be marginalized due to various factors. And that we look to partnering with other organizations and components of city and state government that have the capacity and funding to do some of what is needed. We don't need to do everything ourselves. For example, yoga, et cetera, et cetera. That is something that the rec center and Arnie can, can handle. We don't need to handle that. The tremendous amount of effort and money put into the FEAST program really has to be looked at in the context of food. And there are a lot of organizations in the region who deal with food. We don't have to do it all. And if we, if we can give up some of what we loved in order to get everybody, everyone, all the seniors, what they need will be going a long way. Thank you. I'll make this short because I'm going to come back to you at the end of the meeting for an advertisement. I'm Cindy Bogart. Um, when I first moved here after uh, retiring, I took a writing class from Maggie Thompson. I now have a career as a novelist as a result. Uh, that's what I'll advertise later <laughs> in, the, in the meeting. But um, I, So I just want to say I got so much out of um, MSAC and I would I, I disagree with Peter only in part. Um, some of the core programs are very important to this group, loyal members. Maybe they should continue, but I also agree that we need to do a needs assessment, a wider reach, and a realistic idea of what we can and we can't do. But I will say we must hire a dedicated director, and that person's first job has to be outreach to get new members, because if we don't, we will be in a death spiral. I've looked at organizations and studied them. I'm a sociologist all my life, and that's what happens to organizations who don't get new members. They die. So uh, again, an, a, a dedicated director with outreach as her mission would be a wonderful thing. And again, I thank MSAC for the wonderful uh, new career that these classes have given me. Thanks. Thank I'm Laura Brown, and I um, am here because I was here this morning and didn't have a chance to say anything then. Um, my fault, but um, I just, I actually taught a bone builders class here for 16 or 17 years, and um, it was here through the fire. Um, Cindy McLeod's and Jana Carr's uh, directorships, the beginning of COVID, and now it's the flood. So I think those things have really affected the senior centers, drop in membership and ability to survive. Well, to survive like we used to. Um, there are a few things I'd like to mention. Um, that 
there were great conversations this morning, and I think a couple of things were um, talked about. One, the value of exercise for persons our age. Bone Builders is great. It helps strengthen. I've heard many people say how it has helped them um, do things. There's also yoga and Pilates, and I think these are really valuable to have in person. You have more contact with the instructor, more visibility. And um, you also have, we also have the opportunity to lead hybrid classes, which have worked well for people who would rather be in person and people who would like or can't get here so well. Um, another thing that I just want to mention that I find very helpful and very informative is Tina's class. She uh, sets aside 15 minutes at the beginning of each of her Bone Builders classes for people to talk, ask questions, socialize, because it's on Zoom, and that's important. Um, second, I want to mention the community improvement work because someone asked about that this morning. And Nancy Schultz and Ann Ferguson regularly. What? Think fast, you're out of time. Uh, you're kidding! No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just when I'm at the good part. But there is community service, trash tramps, and grit. And um, that is walk in. So, um, I also want to make a voice for, the, for not having everything on technology. Some of us just aren't up for that. And other things, paper things, phone things are important. I'm going uh, away. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> um, anyway, I think, um, I think I have mentioned most of the things I really wanted to. And also, there is nail cutting now. Um, it's new, I think, and back, and it's wonderful. Ron wanted to talk to you. Hold on. Ron, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was wondering about a separate person here in charge. I wonder what Arnie thinks about it. Nobody thought to ask him what, what your reaction is or what your feeling is about all this. Also, we have um, we also have we have somebody on Zoom, so Matt's going to um, take care of that now. And I think they're going to come through the speakers if all works. Okay, <clears throat> we didn't have anybody Zoom, so we weren't sure how it was all going to um, to work. Anyway, it's seven o'clock, and does anybody else have anything they would like to say? Since we have a little bit of time, or forever hold your peace. <laughs> I haven't forgotten you, Cindy. Don't worry. <laughs> Great. Okay. So first, we're going to have an ad from uh, Cindy Bogard. So uh, one of the uh, one of the ideas that um, that we had was to do a Vermont focused book talk two times a season. So two in winter, two in, two in fall, two in spring. And because um, I published an award-winning novel, I decided I, I would host and be the first book talk person. So here's my book. It's called The History of Silence. Um, I thought to do one novel and one, um, and one nonfiction book or memoir um, for the other one during the semester. So I'm just telling you about this. You need to read the book in advance before you come. I have some here to sell because of Bear Pond being temporarily out of commission. Otherwise, I would suggest that you uh, buy it there. I'll sell it to you for 15 bucks. If you want to pay 20, I'll give the five to Bear Pond Books. Um, uh, so when is it? It's September 21st. That's a Thursday at 1.30 right after the lunch. So come for lunch. Stay for the book talk. This book ha is really a book talk book, so we'll have lots to talk about. And it also takes place in the 80s, so many of you will be familiar with the time frame. Um, secondly, I, uh, Rick Winston, um, whom most of you know, I think, has also written a book called Save Me a Seat, A Life with 
movies about the Savoy and the sad Savoy, but it's going to reopen. But anyway, he's going to be doing his book talk on that book on Thursday, November 2nd at 1.30 also. So I ask you to join us for both of them. We'll see how it goes. And also, if you have any ideas for future authors for this spring, I'm I would love to hear them. I have some too, but I'd rather open it up for people who uh, use the center. That's my announcement, and I'll be around after we're done to sell you a book if you sh should like. And I also have postcards if you're not ready to buy yet. Thanks. Sarah Franklin always wants to say something. <laughs> uh, I watched uh, online this uh, in the morning, uh, the first session, and I heard an awful lot of the things that I feel too, and um, all of the offerings that we have here at MSAC. But a lot of us are in migrants from other places, and we have had experiences of other kinds of senior centers, and so um, I'm glad we heard from some of those folks too. And as an in-migrant, one uh, lack that I have is uh, a knowledge of Vermont history. I would love to have a course in Vermont history, and I would love to have a course in reading Vermont novels. So I'm so glad to hear that you've started us off on that. Um, I love going to school. Uh, and I did it for 44 years <laughs> um, for other folks. And now I get to have another turn. Uh, and I'm so grateful that it's possible. Thank you. So thanks, everybody. Um, if you have written comments, if you could hand them in over there, that would help our note takers um, a lot. Um, and um, I wanted to thank, all people, thank, oh, thank you all for um, coming. And it was um, really thanks for all the people who helped out. Um, it really made this whole thing um, a great success, which is good. Yes, did you want to say something? I didn't realize we were coming to an end. We're coming to an end. <laughs> oh, you were doing each question. I'm Rachel Desolitz. And I was glad to hear you talk about the villages, Erica, because 42% is a very high percentage of you know, elderly people. And I don't know about anyone else, but I worry about what's going to happen to me in, you know, another 5, 10, 20 years. And unless you have a fair amount of money, your options are limited. And so I don't know what that means or for the senior center, but I think in some ways we need to take it on. Uh, you know, there's certainly a lack of housing everywhere. Uh, but when I went to City Hall, I can't remember who I spoke with, but I mentioned about the possibility of having additional senior housing, and they said they would not take that project on. So I was very disappointed to hear that, given the number of seniors that we have here. Not everyone has family that they can live with. Not everyone wants to live with family, even if they have family. So I think that, you know, if we want to maintain uh, the respect that is, you know, that we should have, then we need to find a way for people to do that, you know, throughout their lives. And, you know, we all want to live in place, or what is it, uh, age in place, right? But that may not, I mean, I'm not sure what, how, what that looks like. And I, if nothing else, if we can explore what that might look like, because assisted living facilities is not necessarily an option unless you have a lot of money. Thanks. Good. One more person over here. Yes. Here, I'll do it. You can just stand up. Just turn around so you're facing those so they can see you. Well, thank you. I didn't realize it was going to end this quickly also. Um, and I'd like to s expand your discussion of the arts. Some of you must not know that poetry readings have been occurring here regularly. And um, that's a great way to bring the community together. And if you have a diverse group of readers, that's another way to expand our constituency. So, um, and also painting. I mean, we can expand our discussion of the arts and I think that would be very fruitful. 
Good, thank you. Great. Okay, I'm trying again. Anybody else got something they want to say? <laughs> oh, God. Maybe we got a Zoom person. Hold on one second. I didn't get the full message, but Linda Berger says um, we need a director who can go after grants for us. Can you say that again? We need a director who can go after grants for us. Mm -hmm. Go after grants. Oh, grants, grants, not France. I thought, oh, we're going to France. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Would you like to say something? <laughs> Not much. It's okay. Any words are accepted. Okay. So, um, so we've talked about poetry readings and art and, and so on. And um, we have some dance. Oh, I have to stand up. Whoops, sorry. Yeah, let me have um, this. <laughs> because I haven't been able to stand up very well for a whole year. I've missed a lot. I've missed a it. lot. But anyway, um, in terms of arts and so on, we have a lot of music here. We have a lot of musicians. Um, the jazz band used to play um, before lunches, and it was a lot of fun. And um, we haven't done that this year. Um, we have played outside in front of the building before when there were special occasions, and that's been a lot of fun, too. So I'd like to um, encourage us to get all the musicians in, involved, um, especially if we're going to be studying um, Vermont history. There's a lot of, of music that's been written, uh, folk songs about Vermont history that could really spark some interest. Okay, thanks. Good, thank you. I just have one more quick thing to say about grants. I was just thinking, like, why don't we have a director and someone else who writes grants? You can always write in your own salaries. I worked in a grants department, you know, at Mass General in Harvard, in Boston, and, you know, they raised all their own money besides raising their own salaries. So it might be a good idea to have a director and then have someone who just writes grants and raises their own salary. So that's what I was thinking. Thanks. Okay, any oops, Laura's got another thing to say. I just want to add to um, the music thought. Um, someone this morning mentioned the uh, over swinging over 60s band, which also had dancing with it. And I know um, a good friend who came all every week to dance with her husband here. And um, it wasn't a professional band, it was just people who liked to play. So I, that's just another thought. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Okay, we're trying Matt again. Hold on. <laughs> so Linda Berger would like to continue her uh, comment by saying, the budgets of parks are way over budget, and they do not address the needs that we do. She continues, as a caregiver, Zoom class exercise classes have been a godsend to me. Tina, Reagan, and Shannon are expert at making the class feel in person. Also, we have Christy Minzen who says, I appreciate the opportunity to participate in classes on Zoom and not have to travel to the center. Makes it accessible for me. I do have a concern about rising costs of classes and membership and minimum numbers of folks in classes. That seems counterproductive for a fully functional accessibility center. And Susan Walters says, we need consistent annual mailings about renewing our memberships. Thank you. And Linda Berger says one other comment that Zoom has expanded the number of participants who can participate. Thanks, all you Zoom folks. <laughs> Great. Okay. Anybody else before I, we close this out? Okay. Yeah, I haven't forgotten him. Don't worry. Again. Okay. Again. So thank you to every. Thank you to everybody. Make sure if you have written comments, you hand them in. And Arnie would like to speak, and he'll close out the meeting. Here he is. Earlier today, I forgot to introduce myself. Somebody said I didn't say who I was <laughs> before I started talking. So my name is Arnie McMullen. I've been with the city now for over 30 years. Um, 
lot of experience with programming. I actually started out, if you want to talk about a little history, as a day camp assistant director. I had my master's degree in education and athletic administration, and I've been here now, like I said, for 30 years. Um, I worked with, for those you might remember, Don Lorenovich. Um, he was a senior center director as well as the recreation director for a number of years, and that worked very well while we were under the school system. Um, this is a little different now than what you're used to because after the city, after the senior center went to the city, prior to the rec department going to the city, that's when they hired a separate senior center director. Um, prior to that, it used to be under the recreation department. So just to give you a little history, um, part of being a director is not trying to convince people that you know everything. It's about getting good people in the right places to help carry it along. It's no different than coaching. You're as good as your weakest player on your team. And if, if we don't have the staff that helps support what we want to do, then a director who, no matter how great they are, is not carrying us forward into the future. We got to have a team of people that are willing to work together and carry things on because as my great late great football coach used to say from Norwich, he said, if I die tomorrow, <clears throat> they'll probably hang a hat, you know, have a moment of silence, but kickoff will still be at one o'clock. The game is not going to stop. And that's what we got to think going forward. We always got to think of ways about the future of the senior center, but also the future of the community. You know, um, I look forward to one of the things I started um, since I've gotten involved is I've gotten a little bit more active with the um, activities committee. They had their first meeting the other day, but also the, the council, the senior council, which is, there's a lot of people with a lot of information out here that have ideas on what we can do to make things great for the senior center. Um, and the ideas come from within, you know. I've been doing this for 30 years. I might have a ton of ideas. My assistant, who I may pull in once in a while to help me have a ton of ideas. Between the two of us, we have over 50 years of experience in recreation and actually setting up programs and trips and all that other stuff. Um, but there used to be a slogan that went around the recreation many years ago that the benefits are endless. And it's up to us to going forward to say, how can we work together as a team and get the most for the people of this community? Because we are, we are a community um, that's aging, you know, adult, we're, the older population is increasing. When I first came here, there was over 500 students just in Union School. I'm pretty sure there's not that many students there anymore. And <clears throat> our younger numbers are decreasing while our older numbers are increasing. And part of a vibrant community is balance. And we gotta find ways to also bring younger families to this community. Or as somebody I heard say earlier, we will become extinct. Gotta bring the young f families in, get people here, create opportunities, and I think we can go a long way. But. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie to you, I can't do it myself. So we're going to have to have people involved that care about what they want to see and see what we can develop. So I want to thank everybody for coming tonight because without your thoughts and opinions, it's hard to, to move forward. So are you suggesting there is no chance that an independent director for the senior I didn't say anything like that, no. <laughs> I didn't say anything like that. That's why, that's why there's going to be an assessment. So that's the whole purpose of that. So, yep. And one of my best friends, who, uh, who's also been in recreation for way longer than me, he's uh, in Augusta, Maine, is what is a position called a community services director. And he not only sees all over all of those positions, but he also has childcare under his belt. <laughs> so you can imagine he has a busy day. I'm going to turn this back over to. Thank you, everybody. Great. Oh, good. Okay, you're free to go. <laughs> Take care.